I'm gonna be real with you. When it comes to horror movies, I'm a bit of a wimp. I like them, I just have a hard time sitting through them. Especially when it comes to home invasion stuff. So I don't see many movies of the genre in theaters. Unless I hear really good things about the movie, or if I already like the director, I normally won't be going out of my way to see these movies. Of course, in October, it's kind of hard to avoid them. Because Halloween is coming up, studios launch horror movie after horror movie at us, no matter how generic it may seem. Based off the trailers, Barbarian seemed like it was one of those generic Halloween releases. A movie I expected nothing of. A movie I would normally skip. A movie I was going to skip. But then, a friend whose opinion about movies tends to be based, something I can't say about most of my friends, sent me this. Barbarian suddenly had my attention. So, I went to see it with a friend who was also looking to see a horror movie. And it was nothing like I expected. The trailers lied. And this was the best thing they could do. Now, before I continue, I will discuss spoilers from here on out, so if you haven't seen the movie, stop here and do that. Also, check out my friend's Letterboxd. It should be on screen right now and in the description. He writes some great and in-depth reviews for movies of many different genres. While you're at it, I put a lot of work into these, so if you like my stuff, please subscribe. The support means a lot. As I said, the Barbarian trailers are generic, but that's on purpose. These trailers want you to feel like you know exactly what you'll get from the movie. Now, I don't know if it was the company that edited the trailers that chose to do this, or if it was the studio behind the movie that avoided sending them any footage which would imply otherwise, but this works really well. The trailer starts off looking like a bit of a romantic comedy, until Keith, Bill Skarsgård's character, starts acting weird. This leads Tess to investigate the home and find a hidden basement. Keith seemingly reveals himself as the villain of the movie, and we see a montage of Tess and someone else exploring and trying to escape this dungeon. Obviously, this twist in the trailer doesn't work too well. It pretty much only played before horror movies in theaters, so you know it will also be a horror movie, and online, you see the title. Which is decidedly not the title of a romantic comedy. But there being a twist in the trailer works, because it makes it seem like that's the movie's big thing. Misleading you with a false romance, only to have the potential love interest be some kind of twisted killer. And the first act of the movie pretty much follows the trailer's structure. Tess meets Keith because of a mishap with Airbnb, which double booked the location. Keith comes off as a bit awkward, but overall, he's rather thoughtful and charming. He takes all the steps necessary to make sure she feels both safe and comfortable and they end up having a lot in common. Despite this, because you, as a moviegoer, know you're watching a horror movie, and probably saw the trailer, you take all of Keith's awkward moments as signs that he is definitely up to something. Keith is awkward in pretty normal ways, but every time he did something even the tiniest bit weird, my friend and I were sure he was up to something. Your suspicions only deepen when weird things start happening the first night. Someone opens Tess's door, Keith is whispering some weird shit in his sleep, and you hear quick running during the night. This all leads to a moment where Tess finds a secret door in the basement, a door that leads to a room with blood, a camera, and a bed. Keith finally comes back, and Tess insists they leave. but. He insists on looking for himself. A dumb move if he was planning on surviving, but in your eyes, because you know he's the killer, it's a smart move. While in the trap, he calls for help. Tess hesitates, but decides to go down to help him in a deeper, secret basement. 
He tells her something bit him, and they can't leave, as it's where the exit was. This is it. This is when he traps her and starts torturing. You know it. He's gonna- Wait. What? D did something just kill him? W what was that? Why are we cutting to some Hollywood producer? What's going on? Can underground rooms be listed as square footage when uh, As for rooms in the house that aren't finished, like basements or attics, they should not be included in the total square footage. Below grade spaces, basements, dens, etc., do not usually count. Okay, usually, even a finished basement can't be counted toward the home's gross living area GLA, but it can be noted separately in the listing's total area. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, bitch. The movie then cuts to a few weeks later with the next victim, the home's owner, a Hollywood big shot who has to leave the city of stars as he's accused of doing some pretty awful stuff. Things he did do. All this leads him back to one of his properties in Michigan. As he searches the home, he too finds himself in the basement, though in a much more comedic way. This discovery being shorter and more comedy-driven than horror-driven actually works rather well, because instead of feeling repetitive, the comedy breaks up the tension and feels fresh, which helps the movie's pacing a lot. If these moments were shown to the audience in parallel to Tess's story, we would spend too much time wondering when they would cross paths. But, as it's rather short and gets to the point rather well, we instead wonder what will happen when AJ, the producer, finally enters the basement, and what will be of Tess when he gets there. It also allows the mystery of whatever is down there to linger with the viewer even longer. In the basement, AJ has to team up with Tess to escape their captor. Along this escape, he realizes he's been a pretty awful person. He decides he needs to hold himself accountable and do better from here on- What's that? He tosses Tess off a building, expecting her to die, in hopes that their captor will jump after her instead of chasing him. Huh, okay, um, so despite coming to the realization that he has been terrible, he hasn't grown enough overnight to actually change, because most people wouldn't. Alright, so the, the movie tricked me into thinking it did cheap character growth, knowing I'd fall for it, when, in fact, it did not? Huh. I see. So, yeah, the movie lied to you. Through its marketing and through its runtime, the movie continuously lies to you. And that's why it works so well. The movie sells itself as nothing special and you fall for its trap. You learn to trust it and you find that you really shouldn't. And then it does this again by telling you that this character made this huge character growth in no time. And you're just like, whatever, it's a horror movie. I think it's almost amazing that the movie lied to you so much. Obviously, it's not unheard of for movies to lie in their trailers, editing moments to be very different from what they really are. But this movie lied about its quality. They sold it as a generic October horror movie that you'd forget in a few years like so many before, but it was more than it made itself to be. It's crazy to me that a studio would allow a movie to be as good as can be by letting it market itself as less interesting than it actually is. Because marketing is typically what gets tickets sold. This is actually a lot like what the 2012 Cabin in the Woods movie did. Now, to be fair, I don't know how you can market this movie differently without giving away the twists. And I do think that being a low-budget horror movie with an October release meant it was guaranteed to get enough viewers to make back its budget. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the movie continuously lied about its quality so that you, 
the viewer could have a better viewing experience. A really weird tactic. That said, even had the trailers been exceptionally good, the movie would have likely gone lost in a sea of horror releases that came out around the same time. The positive word of mouth around the movie pushed people like me, who would have never gone to see the movie otherwise, to go see it and recommend it to many more. I don't think it's the best horror movie ever, nor do I think it's the best I've seen, but it will certainly be one of the most memorable movies of the year for me, and I'm very glad to say that. The success of Everything Everywhere All at Once earlier this year showed that positive word of mouth can really make a movie's success, even at a time during which cape shit and Star Wars seem to be the only things that really get pushed by studios. So, Barbarian used what was probably a very small marketing budget to lower the viewer's expectations and go along with the movie's lies. By doing this, the viewer comes out of the movie liking it even more, encouraging them to tell people about it, especially in situations where what they expected was not at all what they got. By lying to you throughout its marketing and throughout the movie, Barbarian succeeds at convincing you that it is less than what it actually is, which constantly works in its advantage as it reminds you that it's actually a great movie, with tight pacing, real characters, and twists waiting for you at every corner. An odd tactic for sure, but one that works surprisingly well. I'm really glad to see the positive word of mouth this movie is getting. Thank you so much for watching. I thought I may as well release a horror-related video while it was the season for it, and then school got in the way. But hey, better late than never. I'm actually quite glad I did this. Let me know your thoughts on the movie, and please check out my other videos or subscribe if you liked this video. Feel free to recommend any show or movie you may enjoy. Clearly, word of mouth works. Who knows? I might make a video about it. Unrelated to the video's argument, but when Keith offers to open the bottle of wine and pour the drinks in front of Tess for the first time, I was reminded of a video from Abelina Sabrina where she talked about how a first date offered to ask the waiter bartender to watch her drink while she was away. A way to make sure she stays and feels safe. I just wanted to say that, as men, we should definitely take action like this, especially if the girl doesn't know you too well. Unfortunately, women do get their drinks drugged, and any action we can take to make them feel and be safer is a measure we should take. I couldn't find a place to fit this in the essay, so I'm slapping it on at the end, but the movie reminded me of this, and I thought it was important enough to include.